Hey everybody, it's Silger. I'm here with Comrade Kane, and we're going to be talking about uh, dealing with the AI. What's up, guys? So, so Kane, you you had a recent game where you where you had a bit of a a snafu with a, a civilization. Let's go over that. Well, you know, it's every game, right? Like you start a game, you meet AI, whether they're closer or further away. Maybe it matters. Maybe it doesn't. But what I'm trying to figure out is like how threatening that AI is. For example, the last game, it was Cleo. Yep. She was pretty close. Yep. And um, I was able to send delegation. Again, disposition, does it matter? Does it not matter? Because her disposition was minus three plus three, so at zero. Yep. Right? So I'm like, oh, all right, it'll be fine. Then no, you're not. 12 turns later, 12, <laughs> maybe 10 turns later, she shows up with her units, and I'm like, holy crap, now I have to move faster. So... So in your opinion, should have I declared the war first? Is there an opportunity to even bribe her to the point of friends? Um, it, here's the thing. Cleopatra, uh, and, and this when I told you this, uh, it, it bothered you, but it's the reality. Uh, Cleopatra, I'm assuming it was original Cleopatra, right? No, it was the emo. Oh, it was emo Cleo? Yeah. Oh, because original Cleopatra is even worse than emo Cleo. But Cleopatra in general is uh is an early war sieve. They, for whatever reason, if you look at a game, Egypt goes to war more often than not in the early game. And so meeting Cleopatra early for me is a sign that I need to pay attention to her troops. Uh, and like, and this comes down to AI decision-making. Um, so when you're asking, should you have declared war? Should you have done all that? Um, the, the honest answer is none of that would have mattered if Cleopatra is deciding to go to war with you. Um, because like I say, Scythia is going to go to war with somebody. If she's already going to war with one person, I'm safe. But if she hasn't, she's probably going to war with me. It's the same idea as that. Seeing as you met okay. Cleopatra first, she, the AI has decided, oh, I'm attacking, I'm attacking Cain. Like, and it's going to start working towards that. And the AI is very single track. You're not going to convince it otherwise, um, if that makes any sense. So when you say, could you have bribed it? Possibly. Um, the but, AI... But the chances are low, yes. right? Like, and especially, very, very low. And I guess it's the location of the AI, right? Because yep. if she has no other neighbors, she has no other neighbors. Correct. Um, I'm the only one and I'm close. And she's so we're going to, go to, to war. war. Yep. So let's look at the case of where war is, early war is inevitable, right? Yes. So you, you, the first step that you would decide, a soger, you look at it, you're like, okay, she's coming for me no matter what. Correct. You're going to try to get all the gold from I'm her. I'm going to get right? all the gold. And in and, and this scenario, um, and this is going to be, this is going to be counterintuitive, um, but, uh, a lot of times I see people say, oh, if you declare war on an enemy civilization, they'll ask for peace because you're the one that declared war. That's not true. But in this situation, I would have gotten the gold and just declared war right away because she's going to move her troops onto my borders and build up her forces. Um, there's no way around it. Like once you see that she's moving troops towards you, I would have just declared war because that's going to change the AI to then they're just going to move their troops directly at you instead of building up their army at the mm -hmm. border and move them all in at once, if that makes sense. So it's going to be easier to defend against a trickle of warriors than two warriors at the same time or two warriors and a slinger at the same time. But if they send one warrior, they, they don't have enough force to take your city out. Does that make sense? It does. So what's the next step you do? Like, do you purchase a couple of slingers? Do you start? Oh, I get a slinger in the city. Yeah, that this is a scenario where you're, you're going to want to get that unit um, where, where I said I wouldn't build a slinger unless I need one. The second I, I see Cleopatra, I'm, I'm not going to do it turn one, mind you. But the second mm -hmm. I see Cleopatra, uh, like I've said before, you're going to scout around their territory. You scout through the territory. If I see their warrior move towards my city, uh, and you were relatively close, you said, right? Yes. So their warrior is going through territory they now have visual on. So they're going to go to that city. If there's no other reason to go there and they stop, I'm declaring war that turn. 
Like that mm-hmm. war is declared. I'm getting the gold. I'm declaring war. Even if I don't have a slinger in the city, because that one warrior can't conquer my city. Um, because all that's going to happen is she's going to start moving the rest of her warriors that way. And this is where if you meet a civilization and all of a sudden all their warriors start moving in uh, the same direction, that's a sign that they're piling up on their borders. Uh, mm-hmm. Does that make mm-hmm. sense so far? It does. It does. Now, with this, when the, with the, because you have to build up your units now. And yep. maybe you have gold for one slinger, I would say. Yep. Uh, maybe even two. But she's not coming with one or two warriors. Um, she showed up with like four. Yep. And um, I mean, having one, it's it's all about tactical moves now, right? Like yep. you, you can't really do anything. Um, there was a city state next to her. Well, you, you can do she, things. Like what? Um, the AI uh, has like a, I don't know how to say this, but they have an area of effect, let's say. Um mm-hmm. If you have a scout, they're sending four warriors at you. If you move that scout in range of their warriors, like one tile away where the warrior can see but can't attack, they'll mm-hmm. chase that scout, even though they declared war on you and they're trying to get to the city because okay. the scout so bait, is the bait. Yep. The scout is the closest okay. immediate uh target. Now, mm-hmm. if they get in attack range of the city, they're not going to leave for that scout. But if you right. can meet them in the middle ground, you can peel one or two of those warriors and kite them off. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. not sure if you're familiar with the term kiting. It's in like mm-hmm. MMOs and stuff where you, where you, like you said, you just lead them away. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you can do that. Uh, slingers are high priority and they have the exact same uh, high priority target. Uh, and they have the exact same movement as a warrior. So if you have a lot of hills and wood tiles, you can do the same thing. If you have a slinger in your city and a scout and a, are a slinger, you can peel some of those units away so you're dealing with fewer units at a time. Um, okay. It's, okay. Cause that's, the, so, so we have one is obviously building up units, whether you're buying them or building yep. them per turn. Two, you can do some maneuvering with a weaker, like, scout yeah. maybe units to kite or bait them yep uh and then number three like what other techs that you would go for maybe you're going for archery at all to upgrade your slingers well, yeah <laughs> if if you're stuck in a war like if you're mm. like like if you know war is coming you have to go archery um like and i, I say and I, I know I, I've said multiple times, you don't buy armor, you don't do this. I, I will say this is a rare occurrence where you have absolutely no choice but to go go to war. If, if you're playing, uh, if you're playing um, aggressive on the positive uh, diplomatic relation front at the beginning of the game. Uh, well, this is the war case, right? Yeah. Like, this is one of those cases where you're like okay yep you're not going to have you're not going to have an opportunity to develop peacefully no matter what exactly. strategy or tactics you employ so you're going to want to get right. archery is there anything else though be, beyond like archery masonry is going to take too long if if, yeah. if you're looking at like a right, 10 right. turn 10 turn 20 war going to masonry is a joke you're, you're like right. people who say get archery get walls nope you you get you get archery but you also want to get a couple slingers before you get archery because the production cost between an archer right. and a slinger is huge. 60 gold is easy. Um, okay. You know, okay. Uh, you is go- there anything else beyond that? Like maybe what if you positioning another- your units, uh, you're going to, uh-huh. uh, at that point, if you're lucky and your warrior hasn't gone too far away, if mm. I, if I meet Cleopatra and she's 15 tiles away, I'm mm-hmm. less likely to send my warrior on a scouting trip. Uh, if I meet Scythia, I'm less likely to send my warrior on a scouting trip. Uh, what you're going to want to do is, one, you're going to want to position your units in the best fortified position possible next to the city. Uh, so either across the river or on a hill, on a woods tile, something like that, so that you're getting a fortification bonus. And two, you're going to want to make it as hard as possible for the AI to get your city under siege. Because the AI is... The AI is bad at most things, um, but once they got your city under siege, you're going to lose it uh, because their combat bonus is just so great. So you're going to want to position in that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, no, that makes sense. So, like, with this case, I think, um, you know, it will be useful to put, like, top 10 warmonger. Yeah, sales. and I, I've been... Clear, right? Yeah, and I've been talking to you uh, uh, about this a couple of times. Is I I I should own like I I need to like make like a list of the sieves that and this comes with a huge asterisk asterisk. Uh, that this doesn't this isn't like for sure. This isn't like like but extra most knowledge. Likely, this is right? like this high is risk me just home. in my experience playing the game and understanding how the AI makes decisions. These are the sieves and the leaders that are more likely to go to an early war. Like Genghis Khan is more like is going to war with somebody, and that one's obvious. But the ones that are less obvious is Cleopatra, your Eleanor. She is a huge early game warmonger, uh, and there's and there's no reason like there's no viable reason for it. It doesn't matter agenda. It doesn't matter disposition. She just generally goes to war. Okay, and you know what? We can probably put together the list. Yeah, that that, that would be it. it. Yeah, attach it in the description yeah. uh, of the video. All right, so that's case one. I mean, I don't know if we, do you have anything else to add to the, it. The uh, the other thing, and this is, this is, I would say, it's a gamble, but it, it works. Let's say in your scenario, Cleopatra declares war on you. Your warrior is, let's say, close to her territory. If you do like start pillaging or you attack her cities, she might go on the defensive. Mm -hmm. Once again, that's the units are going to need to be middle ground. And this is where I would have taken, this is where I would have just accepted the war and declared it, even though it's going to generate me grievances, even though it's going to make me the bad guy. I'm going to be in a better position because her units aren't going to be in that radius of my city where they're going to not change their target. If mm -hmm. you start like attacking their city, you might be lucky enough that they change their warriors back. Because the biggest thing is, deity AI has enough warriors that they can beat you. If you can reduce their warrior amount and it's more like a two or three warrior, you can usually defend against that. It's a very good point. And you know what? I actually I sent the warrior and it, it appeared from the opposite side of the Egyptian territory. However, it was turned, I want to say it was turned like 20 something and she had walls. Yeah. And she was on the coast, uh, close to the coast and they were barbarian quadrimes. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't able to maneuver my warrior to do any kind of pillaging. Well, the, yeah, and, like, yeah. It's like those unique cases, you know, but your point, uh, to distract the AI, I guess, right? Yep. And disrupt it uh, from 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 attacking you by starting maybe some kind of pillaging on their territory. That that is valid. Yeah. Absolutely. And and here's another thing. What you said that's huge. She had walls. Okay. Well, if how did she get walls so early, man? I was like, what the hell? That's irrelevant. Like, that's irrelevant. You're like, but that's yeah. information you now have, right? You now know right. that she has walls. Well. Yeah. When you build walls, you're usually going down the mill. Well, when the AI builds walls, they're usually going down a military path because mm -hmm. they are going to masonry to get a battering ram. Mm -hmm. They're they're doing this, they're doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have to use that information. If you meet a civilization that on turn 20 has walls, they're looking for a fight because they're mm -hmm. prepared for a fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this yep. is where you these are cues to what the civilization Cues. is doing. Um, but it's also not always. Alexander is very rarely going to build walls, but you know Alexander's going to war. Yeah, yeah, and he should be on the list. <laughs> but I think everybody, like you said, there are obvious ones. Yeah, and then there are like... for, for me, the, the obvious ones are obvious, like Genghis Khan, Alexander, people expect that. People don't expect Cleopatra or Eleanor. Are like the game is coded in a weird way because the AI does have decision making tied to the leader. And the example I always use is any game that Masa Musa of Mali's in, look at how rarely he gets a religion. And in the games when he gets a religion, look where his first few cities are and the amount of coaxing he needed to get that religion. 
very rarely will original Molly get a religion unless he's next to a wonder or unless he has a lot of plus faith tiles, which is weird because he's like the best religious leader. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. like Molly with a mosque and holy order is like broken strong, but for whatever reason, he generally avoids religious play. It's almost like that's one of the other type of conversations to have is your take on every sieve yeah from the ai's perspective like what how in your experience how they act what they do because it does give players cues like you know, yeah oh this guy's so it's it's something maybe it's a separate conversation but the, but, that's, right. but that does tie into the the war conversation in that you need to realize that even if you meet gandhi Given the right situation, he's going to attack you. If you meet Canada, given the but like, what, what is that right situation? Is his geographical position right? Yep. If he can't expand, if he can't expand, if you're the only target, if mm -hmm. if every city he can settle is through you, mm -hmm. then you're you're in the way. You're um, in the way, exactly. and and that's the thing, and and you know, and God, that's why exploration is so important because you yep. you'll know right by opening the map exactly and and this these are the things you have to look for because how many times have you seen a city state or an ai uh, uh declare war on a city state and then raid a, raise a city state for like absolutely no reason mm -hmm. no one had any envoys no one had anything right because they had nowhere else to expand so they're, they're mm -hmm. looking for places to expand and for whatever reason the ai decided that city wasn't good enough hmm you know, uh, and that's yeah, like yeah. the AI is very simplistic. If they have nowhere else to go, they go through you. Okay. All right. Well, this is case one then. All right.